Okay. So, title, Are the Problem and Free Will. I'm taking the ball from the horns, really. I want to solve the, the most difficult part. A non-reductive psychoinformational solution, which, which is a, a, a definition that uh, our friend, I'm saying friend, David Chalmers did. Uh, okay, now to proceed. So you see here, there, there are these beautiful eyes of this girl, and the idea is that you want to enter in her mind. That's why I put these eyes here. And so what does it mean? A reductive explanation uh, is a usual thing. I'm saying you, you have a bottom, bottom up description uh, of the functioning. The problem that, uh, of the functioning of something as David Chalmer says, this is a completely different problem. It's not just, uh, we don't know, we don't know, we don't, we don't want to know how the, uh, everything functions. We know, we want to know why the function is uh, accompanied by experience. So the experience has nothing to do with the functioning. And a simple, a simple explanation of the function. So I, I, I can, I can, I can have the, the, the word working perfectly according to theoretical physics and uh, I have understood the secret of life and everything uh, about the functioning of the brain. Everything functions also in a, a zombie the same way. There is no need of, of the experience. Why there is the experience? This is the question that David Chalmers asked. And why doesn't all of this information processing go in the dark, free of any inner feel? So the, an explanation of the functioning leaves the question completely open. And then there is an explanation gap between the function and the experience. They are completely separate issues. So what is a non-reductive explanation according to David Chalmers, I was inspired by this a lot. Oh, oh uh, you can stop me whenever you want, I'm saying, and, and start discussing. <laughs> Consciousness as a fundamental entity, not explained in terms of anything simple. He says this is the only solution to have something which is fundamental because you, you cannot explain it bottom up by functioning is not functioning so something which should be fundamental by definition cannot be explained in terms of anything simpler in particular a non-reductive theory of experience will specify basic principles that tell us how basic experience depends on physical features of the world actually these um, these lines i have already shown to you last meeting and these psychophysical principles will not interfere with physical laws. Uh, and the parentheses are mine, closure of physics. Rather, they will be a supplement to physical theory. I think this is a very good plan to start in this way. I should say that I, I didn't read the, all the, the, uh, the last book. I read the previous one. The last book I read little, not too much. But I found this so in inspiring, really inspiring. So let's go on. Oh, question? Uh, Mauro, can I ask yes. a question here? Yeah. Uh, and this is a question of clarification. Uh, in this second bullet item from uh, Chalmers, which you just erased, uh, you say, explain how, I'll let you get it back on the screen. Can you see the screen? Yeah. So you said a non reductive theory of experience will specify basic principles that tell us how basic experience depends on physical features of the world. And I want to ask you what you mean by depends on. Does this just mean correlate or does that or does it mean yeah, something the, stronger the, than correlate? When I discover what is the experience, I understand that there is anyway an element coming from the physical world, which has to do with the experience. But, but it is not but is sufficient this, to know physics. Is this just, cor like is it just correlation or is it something else? No, no, it's the, 
for example, can be like in my case, uh, the um, different point of view uh, about something that you use to do physics. So you have an interpretation of an element of physics which is different. Where, where is the, the sentence? Well, is the one that I sent? Is is he is it in this in? Uh, oh, can you see my pointer? By the way. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. All all. All I want, all I want to know is what you mean by the term "depends on." What is the, the second where, bullet where, item? The second bullet. A simple explanation. The second. The second. second no, no, no. Bullet, on the right. On the second right. bullet on the right hand ah, side. And, uh, it depends Basic on experience. physical features of the world. Physical phys physical features of the world. We we'll see now what what uh, doesn't mean in my case. It, everything. It seems to me, Mauro, that. The first two uh, the, these statements are mutually contradictory. Yeah, In, at unless first, at first view, unless depends on only means correlation. I think there's a prima no, facie contradiction. No, no, no. There is no John contradiction. Says. Consciousness as fundamental entity, not explained in terms of anything simpler. Okay. In particular, non-reductive theory of experience will spe specify basic principles that tell us how basic experience depends on physical features of the world. Yes. I'm saying so the fact that it's a fundamental thing does not mean that it does not depend. Does not depend in a bottom-up way, which is a function, is just an interpretation of an element of physics. My case is fits both, so it is a, a proof because there exists a case that they, they cannot be contradictory because they, it fits both. We'll see. Somebody is talking. Okay. I continue. I cannot hear you uh, because everybody is silent, right? I, right. I can okay. hear you. Yeah. Okay. Great. Then I, I continue, and then we, we we see that I, I want to. We will come back to this transparency, to these slides, to see that these these three things actually are fit all of them by uh, by my definition of um, of um, of experience. Okay. Okay, so let's go. And, and I'm using a black box approach. And this is actually, for me, is crucial because we have too little knowledge of physiology to address the problem in a, in a detailed theory. And so we have to solve first other problems to understand uh, very little in, in order to understand something about, about uh, consciousness. Knowledge of the functioning also is of no help in solving the, the, the two main problems, the other problem and the free will. We can know everything, of the, the biology and the physiology and of the body, and then we don't understand anything. It's a functioning. What then can be done without a bottom-up functioning approach? So the method is, is a black box method. So I, I, I make plausible assumptions that are conceptually given, not in terms of notions that has to do with the functioning. Uh, build up a conceptual framework and then establish general principles. So on the basis of assumption and principles I want to satisfy, derive the consequences and design a prototype theoretical scheme. And you will see at the end of the, the talk, an actual scheme of a function of a functioning which also has an interpretation which has nothing to do with the functioning Mara, yes. i have a quick question yes uh, on the left i can i can see obviously why the knowledge of functioning is of no help in solving the hard problem but why is it of no help in solving um Free will or understanding oh, free will. I, I solve both simultaneously. Right. Yeah. But can't functioning, uh, can't knowledge about computational functioning be helpful in saying, in telling us something about how free will works? Yes, it can. Actually, uh, okay. these kind of questions, which I understand <laughs> very well, uh, they are the, the, the most interesting. Uh, maybe it's too early to, to make these questions because you have to, to know what I'm doing. What I'm okay, saying, sure. so 
what I'm saying is that is a, it is an approach which is different from the usual functioning approach. It's very different. And then there is a functioning, obviously. But, but the understanding of, the, of uh, consciousness and free will does not, uh, do not come from, um, uh, do not come from the functioning. So, uh, okay, if, uh, this this part there is a there are a few transparencies that comes uh, back to the original talk that I gave in Oxford. So information is everywhere. No, you you you, you imagine light mm, coming to your eyes and then go to the optical nerves and at the end of the story that they you see something. So the idea is that when the information it comes to you is not your eye which is not which is just a part of your body then you feel it so the the idea is that consciousness is the feeling of the information of uh, which is supported by you as a system so it's the feeling actually more generally of the full processing of information at the last stage so consciousness is the direct experience of the ending of the information chain that comes to us. So you are the system that supports the information, then you feel it. So the idea is that information is not just going uh, here and there uh, in a way which is just a functioning, but there is everywhere a feeling of the information by the system that supports so if i am the system which has the state corresponding to the information then i feel it so a, if you think about tomorrow this has nothing to do with the functioning yes right um when you say it's the direct experience of the ending of the information chain d does that mean that um there are initial and intermediate parts of the information chain that are not, are not conscious. Uh, in any way conscious experience? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes? Yes. So there is, there is information is the processing yeah. without this consciousness. Is, there is information processing with too little consciousness, not without. With too little uh, consciousness. Too little yeah. consciousness. Yes. So, I'm, so I'm, you'll I'm, explain what that means, I guess. Oh. Yes. Yes. OK. Yes. Actually, keep these, uh, these questions in mind because we will discuss all of them. Um, so is the, the most direct fruition of the information, which is anyway a very structured kind of information. It's not just one bit or one qubit, and which manifests through different types of qualia. And here, I made a list of, of qualias that, I would love to, to know if you agree. Colors, sounds, tastes, smells, touch, some somato sensations, pain, pleasure, sadness, happiness. Also, the thoughts are composition of are, are, meta, are qualias, very sophisticated kind of qualia. So the idea is that everything is a qualia, including your the pain of your, and and uh, the happiness and the sadness and and your thoughts. So everything is called qualia. Do you agree on this? Apart from the free will, from, yes, from the free will. If you agree, you, of course, you said. So we are the system that support. Yeah, I, I say of course because 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 this is exactly what I've been saying for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, great. We are the system supporting such final information. And system, what is a system? Is something completely featureless, which supports states. So it's not stuff. It's not anything with property, with qualities. With is not a thing. It's not an object. It's a connection between things that happen. Uh, we will see later. Anyway, I already told you about something last time we we met. So the system is featureless, supports states. It may be, for example, two typical example is the bit or the qubit. And we should see what is an opportunity to understand what is exactly a system. And maybe we come back to this 
not too much because we, you already know many things that I told you last time. So awareness as a kind of information. So you see here, I, I will make a, 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 a network of a logical implications. That is not, this is not the same as the one that I presented in, um, in Oxford, it's more, it's more complicated. Uh, and, and if they are read as self-evident, I'm saying is a kind of information awareness. This is clearly, nobody can deny. Is, if it's green, if it's an hypothesis, is uh, purple, if it's heuristic or philosophy, theoretical, if it's yellow, and experimental for blue things. So we'll underlie by color the quality of the assertions. Awareness is the feeling of the information processing. This is the hypothesis, that the main hypothesis. So being the system, a system as states, it supports information. What does it mean just to, to make things um, understandable by non-scientists? Essentially, you are like a, a digital screen uh, which is not just a screen of images, but it's a screen of thought, where, and you feel, you are, you are the screen. Not that you see the screen, you are the screen. So now uh, I just make a very short uh, remind about uh, the OPT, because this is the case of quantum theory. Then I have a, uh, the whole presentation which can be skipped I think we we want to go to the uh, conceptual notions and then if you want we come back to the more precise part of the formalization of the seat of the OPT which I don't think you want to listen uh, before understanding the end of the story maybe later so an operational probabilistic theory is a theory in which you have probability, joint probability of many events, like here denoted by D, H, K, C, G, and, and you connect them in with a graph, which is a, a unidirected graph, acyclic without cycles. So it's D directed acyclic graph, DAG graph, uh, of input output connections, that are the system. So the systems are connections between events. So you are connecting events by systems. What does it mean that? It means that if you take the joint probability and now you take the marginal probability over uh, of few of these um, events like D, H, C, and G, this marginal probability where you sum over all possible events in any place. So you consider all possibilities. These all possibilities are what we call a test. Like for example, the marginal probability of two coins, one core you ignore it. So you sum over the possibility uh, head and tail and the other you see what is the probability then the other is tail. Generally the probability are independent each other. Now you take uh, the, the most interesting situation is that if, even though you marginalize, so for example, I marginalize over all these other events and I keep, I want to know only the marginal probability of D, H, C, and G. When I marginalize, still the, prob the marginal probability depends on the connection with the other. Even though you ignore them because you sum over all possibility of the other, the marginal probability depends on the connection, depends on the network of connection. Apart when, and this is actually part of the formalization of the uh, notion of OPT, apart when you have two not connected parts of the graph, like in this case, two components of the graph. Then in this case, the probability becomes 
factorized. So the probability, depending on graph one, union graph two, like this, is factorized into, into two independent joint probability. But if I, if I make the same, if I marginalize inside the, this closed graph, then usually the, the marginal probability of this, uh, of the system that I leave not uh, marginalized, depends on the graph, depends on what is on the graph. Have you understood this notion? This is a very important. What, what do you mean depends on the, on, on the graph, meaning? I, I will give you, I will give you yeah, an well, example. You need to give some examples uh, I will because give it's an, not very clear to me. Yeah, thanks. No. So I will give you an example soon, immediately, actually, which is this case. So here I have a, a three device, um, actually, the device is only one with two settings, which is this uh, round arrow up or round arrow up, down. And there are lights blinking that can be red or yellow. Now I make them blink. And uh, what I can see here is that if I take now the marginal probability of this one, so I consider only this one, the probability that the, the light here is red or is yellow depends on the setting, depends on the setting on the, on the left side. Whereas vice versa, the probability of the left machines is independent on the setting on the right machine. So, for example, let's, let's see this one. If I change the setting here, and here I don't send the, the setting, clearly the probability of being yellow or red changes because I change the setting, so the, 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 the light is red or yellow because the setting is different. But for example, if I take this one and this one, the setting is the same the up and the down, but the light is different because it depends on the setting of the previous one, which is different. So if I change the setting here, the marginal probability of these two is different. Even no, though I, I don't see the arrows in, uh, in your, in this OPT. Uh, now I, I understand, the the, I understand that there is a connection. I understand there is a connection because I see experimentally that there is a dependence of the probability here from what's going on here. And it, actually an independence of the probability here of what's going on here. And this is actually the causality. The fact that uh, the arrow actually says that it's not just an arrow uh, of input output dependence is a causal arrow. So I see there is something which flow, the only way to explain, to make a theory of what's going on here and here, and why this on the right depends on the left, whereas the left does not depend on the right, is that there is something going between them, which I call a system, which we think, for example, as a quantum particle, and by the way, I cannot see the particle. Nobody have ever seen a particle. We see the manifestation of particles in uh, uh, screens and photos, and, but we have never seen a particle in, in the whole history of science. And, and this is actually a very strong uh, point. So that we see events, we see this, the lights on the screen, we see the spots on, on a piece of paper. And then we, we think there is something giving this probability because it's, it's flowing between one and the other and connects the probability. And this is the notion of particle according to the Copenhagen school, which is more point of view. Nobody see the particle. We see only manifestation of the particle. So there are objective events that are the lights, 
red and yellow, and there is a theoretical notion which connects the events. So I am connecting events with theory. So the theory is a way of connecting events. This is a very general. Have you understood the, the philosophy? So th that's why I, I, I have also a black box approach because I don't need to know what is the system. Maybe it may be an object, it may be stuff, but it may be just a theoretical thing. Like for example, the case of the particle, which is not really an object. Because of, because of many, say, we go to philosophy of quantum field theory, I will prove you in a couple of minutes that the notion of particle has nothing to do with that of an object. It's a connection between events. That's the only thing. So, so Mauro, Mauro I, I to, can I ask yeah, yeah, another sure. question here? Uh, just to be clear on this. So would you claim then that all systems all such connections without exception are theoretical no there are situations in which the, the the theory contains something which is stuff for example if i uh, in the classical case you can you can think for example to a ball a real ball going from here to here and actually changing the the marginal here compared to because it was sent from here and this is something that you see but you say that you say i connect what's happening here with that because there is a ball flying and your theory yeah. your theory is a realistic theory in which you see the system but you connect events by theoretical notions that no, there is no need of asking that you see them yeah i mean even in the classical case where you see the ball each each instant of seeing the ball is itself an event. It's not right, the right. system. Exactly. It's a theory that the ball is continuous. Yes, because, right? because there is no, no difference between system and event. There is no, system, no, no difference between theory and objective stuff because it's realistic, the theory. But this is a strong limitation that we know in quantum theory does not hold. Mm -hmm. So in general, systems are theoretical. General system. So the, the system, the most general notion of system is a theoretical elements connecting events. So the, the hope, the, 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 the goal of the theory is to give a mathematical descriptions of events and systems. So the events actually, there are many events. Uh, you, you see if, if it's happening or if it's not happening, but, that, but then also you want to make a theory why it's happening in terms of system. So you have to describe mathematically the, uh, uh, the events and the systems. This is the goal. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, it's a very general uh, approach, scientific approach, because what is the goal of science? Connect objective things happening. To, you connect the fact that there is the sun rising with the fact that it's warm. And that's the theory of heat. You know, it's to devise a theory of connections and make predictions for future occurrences, predict joint probabilities of events depending on their connections. So you predict probability depending on the connections. And this is what quantum theory does. And the classical theory also does. And any theory, which is a serious theory, does. The problem is that we have, don't have the freedom of doing the theory as we want. We need to put some limitation. We need to, to have a precise framework to formulate a theory. So, and first thing is that we need to have an objective element to be compared with the theory. Otherwise, we cannot falsify. Systems are theoretical, events are objective. And this is actually the point of view of uh, Bohr. And methodologically, this framework, the OPT framework is fit because it's falsifiable. If, if you don't distinguish what, what is objective what, with this, uh, by what is theoretical, you cannot falsify. If you identify, you just describe. You have to make predictions that 
you don't see things that you don't see to be falsifiable. Otherwise, there is nothing to falsify. And, uh, and the goal of the OPT is to provide a mathematical description of systems and events, as I was saying, consistent with their composition rules, allowing to evaluate the joint probability distribution depending on the graph of connections. And this is actually what quantum theory does. So, uh, and then the fact that this information theory is trivial, if you consider a, a bounded set of events, when you connect a bounded sense of events, there are events that have no input, that have no input because otherwise there is another event because the input output connection, the systems connect two events. So there is a, an event that has no input and events that have no output. And this we, and with this we make a circuit like this. You see that this is the most general, the, the, the circuit that I draw here is, is the same as this one, is the most general uh, directed acyclic graph which is bounded. Mario, by bounded do you mean finite or do you mean well, connected? Uh, sorry, finite in the sense uh, everything is discrete here. Yeah, so and, and the, do you also mean that they have to be connected as in this example? Oh, they, they may, you, you may have a, a finite, no, definition is finite da, uh, direct the cyclic graph. If you have a... Okay, uh, so you, you can, can have, have different you, you can have, components. You, 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 can, you can have different co components that are not connected, but yeah. the point is that it cannot be infinite. There, is, there must be a starting point, an ending point. Which are, which are what we call preparations. So preparations are the events with no input and observations that are events with no output. You know, the point is that there are physicists saying, oh, you know, there is no, uh, there is total symmetry in the Newton law, the third one, no? A ball hits the other. Which one is the, the ball hitting the other? Oh, there is no difference. There is a total symmetry. Ball A eats B because ball B eats A. It's only a different point of view. That's not true. Because you're considering that the point of view describe also the guy who, who, hit the, who hit the ball as made of balls. So you need super determinism to have this point of view. But super determinism it's not scientific because it co corresponds to describe an infinite network that you don't have the time to do that because it's infinite. So everything, every theoretical description must address a finite set of events because otherwise it's not falsifiable. So uh, super determinism is ruled out. Mauro, another quick question of uh, clarification. Do you, do you really want to take these arrows as Causal? This, uh, no, no, no. If, if, if there is the principle of causality, which says that the, probab the marginal probability of preparation is independent on observation, every circuit can be divided in two parts, an observation and a preparation. Because when I have a, an event after a preparation becomes a new preparation, like D and H together makes a new preparation. It's a, it's a joint event. There are the rules of connecting the events in parallel and in sequence that are the OPT framework that I told you two years ago. If you want, we can discuss, but then it will take four hours. But, but you know, we can make another talk about <laughs> But, but, but do you, do, are there cases in which you do then say that the arrows are causal or do you just never? No, no, so, no the, the, other, the other cases, I, I don't make the, 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 the assumption. So there is the framework and then there are principles formulated in the, in, within the framework. One principle is causality and the principle says that the, preparation, the probability of a preparation, the, which means when I say probability, it means always marginal probability is independent on the choice of observation. This is causality. If I don't ask that, the theory is not causal and the input output connection is not causal. It may be the reverse, that, that, 
the probability of observation is independent to preparation. And then I, I am reversing the causal, uh, uh, the causal um, direction. Or maybe I have a situation in which the, the direction, the causal direction depends on, uh, on, on the circuits, for example. So this is an additional requirement the fact that the, the circuit is uh, unidirected does not imply causality or anti-causality. You need, you need a, an additional postulate. And, and there is no, no difference between causality and anti-causality. It's just reversing the arrow, like reversing the arrow of time in a formal way, not, not in a substantial way. So, I, 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 so there, is, there is a framework and there are formulations within the framework. The point is that when you formulate a theory, you cannot just say, you know, the theory is yellow. You, have, you need rules for the theory. So for example, I say, provide me mathematical description of connection of these events that happens that I see. This is a, a theory, but I cannot ask you, you know, strange things, you know, and I need a formulation of the theory, which is what I call the, the framework. And, uh, Personally, I don't know a most, a most conceptually deep framework as that of the OPT, or Operational Probabilistic Theory. So probabilistic theory with operational, namely with these connections. I go on. Um, well, just to, on that, that, you're familiar with Judea Pearl's work, I presume. Yes, yes. Uh, Judea uh, is uh, totally against quantum theory. He believes that the world is classic. So just to give an idea what, who is he. <laughs> and and, and the, the causal networks are different. There, there is some, I'm saying, there are situations in which I, I can say that I, the, if I take an OPT causal, for example, I can describe causality as exactly with, uh, in a similar way as Judea Pearl. But for example, I'm not sure, I have this book, uh, I will take a look and maybe I tell you last, next time. I'm not sure that they are unidirected, the graphs. I, I'm not so sure. They are. Anyway, they, they are, oh, then, then, they are the, then they are the same graphs. But uh, he doesn't dead. believe in he doesn't but believe in free will. He doesn't believe in anything, Judea. He doesn't yeah. believe in quantum theory, so his beliefs are wrong. <laughs> his models are all dags. His models are all dags. Sorry, is his models are all directed acyclic graphs. They're directed acyclic graphs. Okay. Yes. Right. So but, but but in fact this this is a cow this this theory is causal is a causal theory independently on any kind of theory. If you assume causality, namely you assume that the probability of preparation is independent on, on, on the choice of observation. And then since this is the most general way of, the, of defining causality in, within a framework which is well defined, this theory cannot be different from the point of view of causality from this. It cannot be different, otherwise it's wrong. In fact, there is a huge literature about causality. Uh, I have a kind of dozen of books on causality. And most of the, the focus is about completely different things, not about the physical notion of causality. Causality is the Cinderella of physics because causality is a law in physics. But everybody ignore it because there is, you know, this whole community believing in the block universe, that there is no time arrow and all this stuff, you know. So there is a, unfortunately, when we talk about uh, up-to-date literature in physics, there is no, uh, how they call philosophies, received view, because the received view is just a matter of who says that, not if it's right or wrong. So the point is that there is not much a notion of what does it mean to make a theory? People just invent gadgets. And some, somebody do it seriously. Like for example, another guy who, do it, who does it seriously is Lucien Hardy and Wouters. These are 
for example, very famous guys and they, they do things seriously. But I know maybe, maybe less than 10 people are really serious about these things. Because everybody has his own garden and to work, you know. <laughs> but anyway, we need to be totally uh, free to, to criticize whatever is, so uh, you can criticize me, I cr can criticize the most famous guy of the world, I don't care if he's famous or not. So, <laughs> uh, Judea is, is a stupid guy, and I, and I can tell him in front of him, because a guy who does not believe in quantum theory is, doesn't understand anything. <laughs> there are still people that like that. <laughs> so, he's not even a physicist. <laughs> really don't understand it because because you know because they confuse they think that that there is a violation of causality in quantum theory i'm pretty sure that this is the reason and the fact that the violation of causality is that there is a confusion between determinism and causality which has completely unrelated notions determinism is probability are zero and one causality is that the marginal of the preparation does not depend on observation in jobs. Anyway, are you there, all of you? <laughs> I feel alone. <laughs> okay, yes. I continue. I'm following. <laughs> okay, continue. So preparation and observation. Yeah, here. Now, so quantum theory described as an OPT is here, mathematically. So if I want to give quantum theory and nothing more than what is quantum theory, I just say the system is described by an Hilbert space. The composition of two systems is the tensor product. And the transformation from the system A to system B is a completely positive trace non-increasing, this symbol means that map from Trace class operators, this is true also in infinite dimension over Hilbert space of the input to trace class operator over Hilbert space of the output. And this is all. There is nothing more to say because everything else is a special case. So I can tell there is system, uh, the trivial system. So here to understand this part, we should see the, the, in detail the OPT, but just saying that I can synthesize everything here. There is no unitary transformation. There is no all of this stuff. The unitary transformation can be used, but they are special case. But the transformation are not required to be unitary. And here we can. This I can tell you uh, that most, actually, all the interpretation of quantum theory are not interpretation of the theory, but are interpretation of the old formulation of quantum theory, which contains irrelevant elements that are coherently connected, but they are not needed. They are overabundant. Anyway, we can talk, we can talk about, there are so many things to, to say, but we, there will be maybe another seminar about that if you want. And there are a lot of things that people don't know and, and the Vulgata is always different. So, uh, just a quick question. What did CP mean in that again? The capital C, capital P in that last slide? CP map, completely positive. Completely. So, so okay. So, means, so capital C, that, capital P means it's completely positive. Com, com, okay. Yes, completely positive. You know what? The, a positive map preserves positive operators. Uh, okay. It, it sends to positive operator. Pre preserves positivity operators. Complete positivity means that it preserves a positive operator when you used locally on a, a positive operator of a larger system. So, for example, I use a transformations on an entangled state and I used only on system A. The transformation, which is the transpose, preserve positivity, makes a transpose of a positive matrix still a positive matrix. But a transformation applied to an entangled state does not preserve positivity. The state is a positive operator, but the positivity is not uh, preserved. I don't know. If you want to know these things, I can I can tell you 
this is just quantum theory. It is not uh, nothing more than quantum theory. But uh, okay. what I'm saying is that I just give the, the, the mathematical description of what is a transformation and I get back everything, what are states, effects, everything. So I don't, the mathematics is just here in three lines. And okay. Well, you, you have some assumptions about probabilities existing and so forth also in, oh, which are behind this. I don't know. I, I give probability for, I'm saying the, the framework, the framework has also probability inside. And this is part right. of the framework, not part of the theory. Yeah, so I'm saying that that's also in there. It's not just those it, three lines. Because the, the framework is OPT, it's not OT, not operational theory, it's operational probabilistic theory. So the probability is, is in the framework. Okay. So the OPT framework, oh, sorry, I want to skip it because otherwise we don't, we don't talk about. Ah, I can tell you just a few things that uh, maybe if you want, we, we will see the framework and the principles inside the framework that give rise to quantum theory. Uh, but there are also many other OPTs, like here, the quantum theory, the classical theory, the theory of qubits only and not quantum theory, the fermionic quantum theory, the quantum theory on real Hilbert space, and, and many other. And we, uh, we, we like to study these different theories because we want to understand conceptually the principles and for example, one crucial point is to understand if principles are logically independent. And so if you find a theory that obeys all principles apart from one, then you know these principles is independent from the other. And this is up, up, up to now is the case of the principle of local discriminability, compression and purification. And, and recently we, we discovered that the principle of no information without disturbance is satisfied by all theories, apart from those that contains classical system. So one can have information without disturbance only if the theory contains classical systems, which is a very sharp result. This is the last result of a paper that I have sent you recently with Tosini and Perinotti. And this is actually relevant for our point about consciousness. So uh, the independence of principles is a, is a very challenging problem because, but if you understand the logical, uh, you understand things in terms of uh, principles, in terms of concepts, in terms of connection between concepts in the, one concept implica, impl, implies the other concepts or things like that, you have a conceptual understanding. What I don't like of quantum theory in the usual uh, way is that we understand things because we do the calculation and we see, ah, oh, the calculation says that, but we don't understand in this way. Understanding means understanding conceptually, not with calculations. And up to now there was the shut up and calculate of uh, Richard Feynman, very famous, uh, which is good for a while, but not forever. So I, I agree with Feynman. In those years, I would have done the same, but not now. Now we won't understand, not just shut up and calculate. Uh, <laughs> so we have seen awareness is a kind of information. Awareness is the feeling of the information processing. We have seen the notion of system as a connecting uh, objective events and uh, Information theory is synonymous of OPT. There is, and here we can have, uh, have a, a complete debate about only this topic, and I will prove that there is nothing more and nothing less in information theory and OPT. They are the same thing. So an information theory, not in the sense of Shannon, because this was just the information, uh, com the communication theory of information, classical one, by the way. There was no processing uh, apart from uh, error correction and this kind of that were needed for communication. So information theory, actually, there is not a book that, that really treat the notion of information theory. And 
Mm. And this is actually, as I show you, is crucial for the scientific method because there is a, a strong difference, separation between objectivity and theory, th theoretical notions between what is objective and what is a theoretical. So you can falsify and, um, and this is a device independent black box approach. So there is something flying between, I don't care about what is it, is something that I make, I say is quantum. It could be a molecule, it could be whatever you want. It's it just a connection between things that I see. And so now, coming back to qualia, that are the starting point. Thoughts are qualia. This is the, the point. Meaning is made of qualia. I don't know if you agree on these points. Feelings are qualia. Pain and pleasure are qualia. Qualia combine to make new qualia. So I combine colors with dark and I have new kind of colors, new kind of qualia, combine colors with shapes and I have a color shape and I combine colors in a different way to get the new colors and then I combine everything. If I analyze a thought I see is made of qualia and this is a, the thought itself becomes a big qualia. Do you agree? What, what else is, is there? Of course I do, of course okay. I do. I, I know that you agree. <laughs> <laughs> Federico, I know we had discussed this. Federico, it, it seems to me that for you, Federico, meaning is uh, not quite the same thing as qualia. Qualia have meaning. Uh, you know, meaning is the same as qualia when it comes to self meaning, because there is no way to distinguish the meaning from the qualia. There is a dis distinction between the qualia and the meaning when you observe some, another. From, us, from outside, right? I agree. From outside, I agree. that's right. I yeah. agree. I agree. I, I said. I said this is three, four years that I say this. Yeah. The intimate yeah. meaning, the intimate meaning, the meaning that you think that you that you feel is the qualia, but the meaning from outside, the one that we de de describe in books, this is not the qualia. Yes, that's I correct. Agree. That's agree. Correct. Totally agree. Is there, any, is there any significant difference between saying that meaning is qualia? as opposed to meaning is made of qualia? But qualia are made of qualia and the, the, in both directions also. So there is not a unidirected implication that there are elementary qualia. I'm not so sure there is an elementary qualia. If when you are born, to, to, to know what is the color, to know what is the color, uh, red you need to see an object which is red so you extract the qualia from another qualia which is a, a ball for example which is red we learn qualia by ostensivity when I, I i show you something red then i show something else red and you in, you in, have the intuition that there is something in common between the two which is a qualia by itself and is a very elaborate qualia and you get the, the notion of qualia of the color qualia. The fact that we, you say that the qualia, the red is an elementary qualia, is a very sophisticated qualia, this assertion. But anyway. Yeah, that, that, that's a conceptual understanding or, or a label that we're, under, that we're learning by ostensive definition, not the raw qualia itself. Right. In, in some ways, it's, it's an intuitive process. In other words, uh, you wouldn't be able to communicate if you didn't have that intuitive process available that allows to point to something and then understand that what you mean, you know, is really your qualia and you know, I'm speaking from my qualia. So it's one of those things that, that, that you know, it, it, requires something that is not mechanical at all it's intuition yes and in fact it's not mechanical at all i i agree with you and in, in, this is actually 
what we are going to see. Qualia are states of ourself as a system. So I now I am a system supporting information. What is the qualia? Is the information that I support. So is a state. And now we will see that this is a looks like a, a stupid typology, but there is something more inside. So qualia are states of ourselves as systems. So let's see. First of all, awareness is private. And this is something that nobody can deny. It is not shareable. Private and not shareable are synonymous. And I, I, I put something more. I say, even in principle, so this is an hypothesis that even in principle cannot be shared. There is no way of sharing our qualia. And so this implies that the, uh, as a theorem, that awareness information cannot be classical. And the theorem is the theorem that I told you before, that the no information without disturbance, no information without disturbance is true always, apart from classical theory. So awareness cannot be classical. Now, next hypothesis is that is quantum. This is a, an hypothesis, but we know that it cannot be classical because otherwise it's shareable. So if you believe that we can share the thoughts one day and I can read your thoughts exactly the way in which you see them, then you don't believe this. And this is a, a, an assumption. So I will put as an assumption, but it's an assumption which is, you know, shareable <laughs> in the sense that I assume that most of the people believe in these things, even though it's an assumption. You know, when you do science, there is always an assumption and you have to recognize what you assume and what you de derive from the assumption. And this assumption is a, I say, is an assumption, but it's an assumption that everybody believes. So the point is that there are assumptions that are not shared. There are assumptions that are shared. And there's a convention of, to, to, to have shared assumption in, in making theories. So the theory is, is shared because by convention, a theory is, is for everybody. So as a system, we are quantum. So we are quantum system inside the soul is quantum. And qualia are quantum states because they are the state of the system. So awareness is a private information, privacy in principle as an hypothesis, no information without disturbance as a theoretical derivation. Awareness is non-classical information. Is non-classical, is a non-classical OPT, and we suppose as an additional hypothesis because we should have consider also other different OPTs, that is quantum. And qualia are states of ourselves as systems. This is what we say. A, a quick question um, for and, clarification. Um, the events that go into and out of a system, mm -hmm. are, are they parts of the states of the system or are they no, not? No, 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 they are not. The events are, the classical information outside that produce in me uh, the, uh, the, the end of the story is is connecting these two things so there are objective events outside that produce quantum states inside and then my quantum state inside transforms through free will into classical events again that are objective so, so object events have no qualia no events are not qualia and are so there are events that are there are events that happen in my in in myself like for example you know if i if i if i do something i touch the table 
is uh, my free will decide to touch the table, then the table is touched is an objective event. You can see it. So I, I'm, I'm not saying that I am all subjective. There are, I do things that are objective and I get information that are of this objective. So the input and the output are objective. What comes inside is not. I can't have qualia of objective events. I, yeah, the, the, what, the point is that the, the event is objective, but the way in which I feel this event is not objective. So I have a book and my idea of the book is different from your idea of the book, but everybody sees there is a, a book there and we agree on the classical thing that there is a book there. But my feeling of this book is different from your feeling of this book. So we convert. But that book itself has no qualia. The book itself has no qualia. The book is a book. The qualia are all and, inside. And, and does that book exist uh, if, if you as want a physical consider, system? As a physical, as a quantum system, the book may, yeah. have, may have a consciousness. But this is another point we. we I need to, to tell another couple of things before going to the okay, so, okay. Clearly, we when we, we consider consciousness, we consider consciousness at some high level, not very little consciousness, because it depends on otherwise there is always some consciousness in this framework. But it's the amount of consciousness which is crucial also. If you have only one bit, this is not. You, you, you don't have sufficient qualia to have thoughts. Anyway, let's see, we are going, let, let, let understand what does it mean that qualias are quantum and why I think that qualias are quantum. When I make a superposition of up and down the block, on, I don't know if you are familiar with the block sphere, so-called, which is actually a ball, the block ball. Nobody's yes. familiar? You, have, you are familiar with the black block sphere, right? Yeah. So, so there is the up and down that here are called the zero and one up and down states. If I superimpose the up and down, which corresponds to the arrow up and the arrow down states, with the plus, I get the left and the right. So I make a superposition of the qualia up with the qualia down and I get left and right, which are completely different kind of qualia, left and right, not up and down. They are direction qualia, but they are different qualia. And if I make superposition with plus I and minus I, I get front and back, which are new qualia again. And I can make superposition with something inside and I get other directions. But then I say, oh, it's something in between. So let's say these are the most complementary qualia. Up, down, vertical, horizontal, they are complementary. In fact, we know that the quantum states do not commute. Say, if I consider the possibility of observables in this direction, they don't commute. But they are complementary also in the, not in just in the sense of Heisenberg, but also in our usual sense that they are, they, that are completely different and they cannot be compared because up, up and down is incomparable with left and right. They are completely different things. Do you agree? And the same happens with colors. When I, I make addition of green and red, I get yellow. If I make addition with green and blue, I get cyan. If I get blue and red, I get magenta. If I make a subtraction between yellow and magenta, I get red. Between yellow and cyan, I get green. So I get new qualia by summing qualia. So the superposition goes very well in agreement with the notion of qualia. And superposition is a way to create new qualia. Maro, are you saying that this will work for any dimension yeah. of qualia of experience? Yeah, yeah. Or yes. because because what I see here is that you're using the example of color, but color space has a structure that is, you know, 
not that different. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. I'm using colors just to, 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 to give you the intuition of the notion that you can create qualia by summing, subtracting, superposition of qualia. And the colors from the wave, the wave uh, nature actually are not particle but waves. So it, make, it makes sense to make superpositions, right? So, right, but the basic point is that this would apply no matter what qualia we're talking about. No, but for example, I cannot I cannot make superposition with an I with colors. I just have the sum and the subtraction here. I don't I don't know if I can make a phase in between between minus and plus and consider minus plus. So this I'm not I'm using them just to give the intuition of what does it mean to make superposition and getting completely new qualia. So I'm not saying that this work for the colors in the brain. I'm not saying that. I, I'm, I'm not implying that the brain makes a proposition of, of colors in this way because it's not true for sure. I don't know, maybe. You, you are basically showing that if you do sum or subtraction, you don't get things of the same quality. Right. I, I get I, a new quality. Which, I get that's a new right, quality. Which is new quality, which is which is not what you do with math, for example. Right. You know, you have something completely new. You sum you sum, you know, uh, if you sum or subtract in a, you know, within a within a, a the, the right. idea of, of a of a group, well, you, you get elements of the same set. Here you go outside the, you know, outside the set. Right. You basically get something else. And that's, you know, but people that do sum and subtractions thinking arithmetic, when they, when you use uh, uh, they get imaginary, numbers. Number, imaginary numbers, you, it's not true, it's, you get something else. And that, that, that is the point crucial point that you're making that most people don't ever, ever thought about it because you know you you simply do the calculation without thinking of what you're doing yeah the, the notion of qualia is a quality summing two qualities you get a completely different kind of quality not just the same the grade different grade so thinking to green and red as a different grade physically is right but from the point of view of qualia is totally wrong. Green and red are different. They're not the same. They're not just the frequency which is changing. So, and I sum green and red, they are two different frequency. I get something with a different frequency or, and, but the yellow is a new color. It's not green and red. Yes, anyway. My claim is that we can go on and we can put together a property with another property like color and direction together. So, and I put color and direction together, I get something which is neither color nor direction. So, for example, make an entangled state of up, red, plus down, green. You think this is wrongly, if you think this is wrongly, in fact, it's different, that this is up and down with the plus, which means is right, and red and green as a color, which is, which is, green, which is uh, yellow. That's wrong because this is up and down tensor, red and, and green. So this is what, this is not, not, can never be an arrow with a color because what, whatever you do when you do entanglement, you need some, you, you get something which is not an arrow and which is not a color. You understand what I mean? Yeah, so you're, I, ju you're just saying that entanglement and separability are different, right? Yes, but the separability means that I put together a qualia with a qualia, and I get an object which is, for example, round and red. Right. But here, I put, to get, I put together qualia, not in a factorized way like this, 
but right. in an entangled way, I get a new qualia. So color and direction, I get a blob. <laughs> yeah, the, you see? the left, side, left side is entanglement and the right side is separability. Right. <laughs> so so if, if I put together a red arrow with a, a, green, a green arrow down, I get something which is not a colored arrow. <laughs> I get something different. So this is the power of entanglement that now, if you think about, these are only two systems. But if you have N systems, where N can be a very small number, like, you know, 100, you get a huge number of qualias, new qualia, completely different qualias, because you get what? Four to the power n. I'm saying if I consider just the, the most complementary direction of qubits, I get four to the power n. But, but this is true also for classical information, but in classical, in, for bits, you get two to the power n. Here you get four to the power n. But these are not just numbers like in classical information. They are new qualias, completely new because there is a superposition. So you have a huge amount of different, qualitatively different qualias, exponentially large with the number of qualia that you are entangling. You know, after a while, you, you may have the old thoughts that you can imagine in the mind of a person. And however, we can entangle Three, four, um, yes, we can entangle many qualities. Okay, now, if you understood this point, the entanglement and superposition generate high level qualias that are thoughts. Now, we need to understand one thing crucially what is the difference between ontic and epistemic states and transformations? So an ontic state, for example, is the state of the coin. I toss the coin, I get head. Now, this is a so-called pure state. It's just the precise head, zero or one, either zero or one, either head or tail. Now, I don't know what's going on. And then I ask, what is the state of the coin? I say, oh, one half of probability is head, one half of probability is tail. So this is an epistemic state because I don't know. It's a state of my knowledge. It's not the state, the true state of the coin. So this is the difference that I want to stress about ontic state and epistemic state because, because the notion of ontic state in the physical literature has been going down thanks to Chris Fuchs, and I actually totally agree with him, the notion of state that we use all the time in physics, not in, in uh, to do consciousness, awareness, is an epistemic notion. Because if, if the state is pure, it's because we prepare the state and we know it's pure. Otherwise, it cannot be pure. It's always mixed. And in fact, it's an epistemic state. And it depends on the fact that I know it. If, I, if it's pure, because I know it's pure, it's epistemic. So the, the fact that when I describe as a theoretician states, the states are always epistemic. And if I know that the system is in a pure state, it's because I know it is a pure state. I prepare it. Or by theory, I know it must be pure. But I want to, to make the difference between ontic and epistemic because we are going to use it strongly now. So this is a, the superposition of up and down or up, up or left or right, right. These are pure states. I, an epistemic state is the mixture between up and down. I don't know if you are familiar with the uh, density operators. This is the density operator corresponding to the upstairs uh, state, and this is the density operator corresponding to the down mm -hmm. 
state. If you are familiar with this thing, you can understand everything else. These are pretty elementary notions, but if you, you are not in the field, it may be possible that you don't. So composite system. These are all the products in the EDIA operators. Sorry, go ahead. This is a, the, the product of a, of a, a cat and the bra <laughs> in the language yes, of the yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. So this, uh, this is a rank one positive operator. It corresponds as a matrix uh, to a matrix having only one element different from zero on an orthonormal basis. So composite system in a non tick state means that if, if it's a non tick state is pure and when it's pure the, the most abounded states that are pure are entangled so now we we say what is the state of our mind is pure because it's a non tick state i am the system living the experience of the state i have one experience the state is one is pure is not an epistemic notion is a nontic notion because i am my qualia so i exist i assume that i exist i am the car right i assume that i exist because i i feel i exist so this is the assumption if nothing exists then we cannot even discuss about <laughs> about uh, consciousness so consciousness qualia are ontic this is the point this is the, the second big thing entanglement and superposition generate high level qualias thoughts the system must be coherent so it cannot be in a mixed state my mind never mixed because i feel the information and the information that i feel is one is pure this is a crucial point because this for example gives rise to a possibility of us to a, a proposed solution of the combination problem it is the most significant and pressing problem in, in, for the pump psychist. Ah, here I reported what I found on the web. Stated generally, it is the problem of how precisely the fundamental conscious mind come to compose, constitute, or give rise to some further additional conscious mind, especially our own. I don't know if you agree, I got this from the web. But it seems to me that when, when I ask you what is the combination problem, um, you said something like that. Right. It's, it's there's two versions. One is combination of qualia, and the other is combination of subjective subjects. Okay. Uh, this is the second one, the one that I I have in mind. Okay. So, marginal states of entangled states are mixed. So, if I take the 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 entangled state of two systems that I draw as balls when i take the marginal one it means that i take the state which gives all the probabilities of every kind of observation on one system which corresponds to make mathematically the partial trace of the positive operator corresponding to the entangled state i get always if the state is entangled i get always a mixed state so if i take a portion of the set of systems that are maybe somewhere in the brain and i consider only this portion this portion Time is to go home. oh sorry <laughs> this is my computer <laughs> reminding me uh, so when I, if i take just one part of my mind uh, this is not generally now now i have to make things more precise is not cons conscious a portion of my mind if i take two individuals together there is another reason why they are not a single conscious thing because what matters in the consciousness is not just an instantaneous state 
but it is the evolution. So it's the evolution which defines the person, the personal identity. Is the evolution of the of the state, not just the state. So in order to have evolution, you need to have interactions, and interactions between parts that are separate are impossible. So if you take two men, they cannot interact quantistically, mentally, and that's why they are separate, because, because they have, each one is a separate consciousness, but the two consciousness do not, do not interact, they don't communicate. So you see the, the, the purity is important to say that I am one mind, I'm not two minds. Now, if you cut the corpo callosum, what happens is that you cut the line of interaction between two parts of the brains. After, after cutting then, there is a situation in which you have two different consciousness because they, they cannot interact anymore. Yeah, but and, and, and here and here's the key point that, that you make uh, um, that, that I want to emphasize one brief thing. It is that the idea of a sort of a, a single consciousness that that you know and that is nothing else but a single consciousness, which is you know many claim today that you know in a, in, as opposed to an electron is conscious uh, is impossible because you know it, it doesn't it, it doesn't add up in other words in order to have conscience you need to you need to have evolution of states that occur via communication so so the, the aspect of communication and the aspect of evolution of the states is fundamental Yes. So I, I underscore that. No, and, and, I, and that and that doesn't it, that doesn't accrue to the panpsychist panpsychist theories. They consider only one consciousness, like a Buddhism. You know, <laughs> there is only only one consciousness, period, you know, and that's the end of it. No, the miracle the mi coherence is a miracle, is not is is like, is like consciousness, is a miracle. Because Not true. Once uh, once you have decoherence, then uh, yes, exactly. Then things are in a different light cone. That's so correct. I mean, communication. Yeah. You're gonna have yeah. uh, the phases are all messed up. Clearly, if you believe in the many world, which is actually a belief, has nothing to do with the quantum theory, because it's not an interpretation of quantum theory. Because the state of the universe, nobody can say that if it is pure. If you believe in a, in a, the many world interpretation, then there is only one consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> which is the universe. So it's like believing in God. It's not, it's not different, actually. It's the same thing. And we are just part of God. This is... A, but we cannot prove it. It's a, something unprovable. Anyway, this, there are so many things to say. <laughs> now, uh, so you get two factorized states. There are two individuals or you know, if, if, if it's entangled is one individual, but actually what matters is not just the state, but is the purity of the states during the, the transformation. So the transformation must preserve the purity. Otherwise, so the only transformations that are allowed inside the brain are probabilistic transformations that must preserve purity. And uh, so, we have also the notion of, uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, let me first finish with about the combination problem. Purity of the conscious ontic state solves the combination problem through individuation criterion. Awareness individuated by coherence. By the way, this idea is not so original because I found this in many books recently that I bought 20 years ago. And um, say they, they speak about frolic state or things like that. Actually, the problem is that they don't give a motivation for it. So they just say it's a pure. It, the intuition that the state is pure is, uh, is common in the literature, not, not, not scientific literature, pseudo scientific. And uh, so the personal identity, impure state ergo sum. This is the dictum now. 
And then let's go to the free will. So as you know, quantum randomness cannot be interpreted as lack of knowledge of pre-existent reality. It is an act of creation. This is the most um, popular interpretation of the randomness because it's not, cannot be interpreted as a lack of knowledge. It can be interpreted as a lack of knowledge that cannot be falsified because it depends, is it something existing locally, which depends on a remote setting, but I cannot falsify that. So the other point is not scientific. So there is no difference saying that it depends on something remote. I don't know where, I don't know who, I don't know what, and saying there is an act of creation. Anyway, is inherent randomness, is randomness that cannot be interpreted as a lack of knowledge in the usual sense. There are only two alternatives. The pre-existent reality depends on remote setting, as I said, and the random outcome is a genuine act of creation, namely a genuine becoming. So the, fir the first alternative is not falsifiable, since generally we cannot know the location of the remote setting. We are those left with the alternative two, namely quantum randomness is an act of creation. One may assert that also this alternative is not falsifiable, but the lack of falsifiability also for just the freeness of the will. So I cannot falsify that the will is really free. Therefore, we conclude that free will is compatible with theoretical description as a quantum outcome. So now I have transformations that are probabilistic because they must preserve purity and they are generally non-deterministic. Non and the free will is what? Is which transformation occur? Is the quantum outcome? And now I let me, so personal identity, consciousness, evolution of free will. So we have an ontic state and epistemic state. The difference from the point of view of mathematics, there is a little bit of mathematics here, is that a non-tick state, the state is defined by a positive operator. And when the positive operator is as rank one, is a pure. So a positive operator with rank is, is corresponds to a pure state if and only if is rank one. Uh, so ontic state rank one, epistemic state rank larger than one, generally larger than one. Can be also the case. Oh yeah, the match is your definition from earlier. Sorry. The uh, sorry, I was just saying. Yeah, cool. The match is your definition from earlier. Epistemic yes. state is a linear combination. Yes. Of a bunch of things, the rank is going to be higher. No, no, because the you have to take the, the the superposition of the vectors and then make the bra and the cat, which are which is still a vector tends to the vector, which is rank one. Exactly, indeed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas when you mix, you have uh, one, one, which is rank one, plus two, two, which is rank one, and the rank becomes two, because the, the support of the operator becomes the dimension two. And <clears throat> So you have ontic uh, transformations. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, but wh why should rank be greater or equal one? No, no, so you are right. Just be greater than one, right? No, there just is a, one. the special case in which the state is, is trivially the one of a single qubit that is up. Oh, I see, okay. And then is both, maybe for some reason you know the state. It can be, is this, is, this is a special case of epistemic state. So. The, the difficult thing is to be rank one. It's easy to have rank larger than one. So the difficult thing is the, to be ontic, not to be epistemic. This is, everybody knows what is epistemic. But to be ontic is hard. Ontic transformation are transformation that preserve purity. So these are the transformation that can occur in the brain, the transformation that preserve purity, that preserve the nature of the information, which is that of 
pure state of, of our system. Actually, our systems, what are the R systems? They change. We, we have a transformation that go from a set of system to another set of system. Generally, they have an, a common subset of systems, but the input systems and the output systems generally are different. There is no need of keeping the same. Uh, we can have neurons that die, neurons that are born, and, um, and parts of the, of the body connected or not connected. Or, so the systems and the input and the output, are, they may be different. But the point is that the transformation must preserve purity and, and occurs with some probability. And the, the transformation which preserves purity is of the form operator, operator adjoint around the state which is a positive operator, which preserves positivity. And it must be that this operator has a norm bounded by one. Otherwise, it becomes trace, is no longer a trace non-increasing. And the probability of occurring this particular ontic transformation is given by the trace of this one. Of this. This is elementary quantum theory, but it's not so popular. People, people don't know quantum theory. Or there, I, I can tell you there are colleagues of mine that don't, if I tell these things, they say, ah, I didn't know that. So, because people are familiar with quantum mechanics, the Schrodinger equation, the, the chemical part or the structure of matter more than the, the, the theory. So, and which, transformation occur is which one occur is the free will and the sterner classical input is the one which determines also the transformation but not in a way which is deterministic so we have on tick transformation and clearly we have epistemic transformation like for states An epistemic transformation is the, the one which occurs with probability one and is the sum of all possible of all, all possible on tick transformations and the probability of having uh, the transformation a over rho is one. So this is a deterministic transformation. So when I say the probability of being either up or down is one. So I'm, the probability of being either zero or one is one. So this transformation, the ontic one are only probabilistic. The epistemic one I sum over all possibilities, over all possible transformations that are ontic. Every transformation has its own probability. I don't need to, to put the probability in front because the probability is given by the transformation itself. And so I don't know if you can follow here. It's, everything is very, very simple, but you, if you want, uh, we can go into details and I can even write on a tablet and make formulas more explicit so we need more time for for understanding details that are maybe not familiar to you because you are not physicists these are so this is the density matrix see, yes yes density matrix the completely positive map with rank one this is a, 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 a sorry this one is an atomic map so called atomic so it cannot be decomposed with only one Krauss element. I don't know. If you want, that, if you want to learn this quantum theory, uh, we, take, we can take another seminar or another couple of seminars. And um, so this that is would help the me. You would like to? Yeah, that, uh, that would help me. I, I don't know about Chris and Chaitan. Anyway. Uh, these are formulas that establish the, the completeness of the epistemic transformation, like that there is, you don't forget tail or you don't forget uh, head. You have considered all possibilities. 
Anyway, the collection of these transformations is a, what somebody called von Neumann Davis measurement. I, I'm using this just to give a little bit of uh, relevance to von Neumann, who is my, the person I have more, most admiration in, in, in science. Uh, because everybody claims that the state reduction happens in our mind, the von Neumann one. Actually here, there is some, some reduction happening in the mind, but it's not von Neumann, it's, it's a different kind, more general. Oh, you're referring to the von Neumann chain, where, where yeah. so the, 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 the particle uh, now entangles, say, with a measurement device, and right. all the particles inside the measurement device are entangled, and then the flux of information from the measurement device, say, to your to your screen, is all entangled, and then all the way to your retina, to your brain. So that that's like a Voinemann chain of, uh, but we just don't know where along the way uh, yeah, the collapse but, is happening. But the, the, the difference between this and and the von Neumann one is that in the von Neumann these operators are rank one and they destroy the entanglement. Here, they keep and renovate the entanglement. So it's, uh, it's been called this way because it's a generalization of von Neumann, but this is an historical name. What I want to underline is that in the past, von Neumann said on his book or some, somewhere else that in order to solve the, the Schrodinger cat paradox, you have to think there is a collapse in your mind, right? And this collapse is the von Neumann measurement. It happens in yes. your mind. And this gave rise to a huge amount of uh, literature, Ayurveda and other stuff like that, uh, quantum, uh, the quantum soul and all these things. And, and by the way, the, the same David Chalmers, there is an interview on YouTube somewhere that says, you know, there is the, the quantum collapse in the mind, so there is a connection with physics, which is true, I'm saying, but it's not the collapse. It's not a collapse because the entanglement is preserved, actually, is transformed to another entanglement. There is no collapse. We lost the last, the last, we la we lost the last minute. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, okay. I was saying that there is no collapse. There is, because the collapse of von Neumann destroy entanglement. Here, the entanglement is kept alive. It evolves. It's not destroyed. Yes, exactly. That entanglement has to stay alive. Uh -huh. So it is crucial that it is not a von Neumann measurement. It is crucial. Um, mm -hmm. Now, you see, you have a, the, the full scheme. Uh, uh, the full scheme of what's going on. So von Neumann... Davis, let's uh, maybe I should I should forget the name of von Neumann, but I don't know if it's a good thing to put the name of this measurement. But it's just to give an idea of what there is a special kind of measurement comes from the system must be coherent, which is a self-evident, and awareness is quantum, which is an hypothesis. And. Uh, no, now I want to say what's going on. So the, the state of the mind goes from time t to t, to t plus one is the, out, the input state. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, somehow the bandwidth is... Uh, okay, you're back. Okay. But your screen share stopped. Yeah. Yeah, it froze. Uh, I got my screen going down for a while. I don't know if I, I share the screen again. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we lost, lost, we lost the last two minutes, two, three minutes. Okay, yeah. I, I come back to where we left. Let's see, mm, share the screen. Mm. <laughs> I have to find the screen. <laughs> okay, where is Keynote? Keynote, Keynote. Okay. 
I'm sorry. Um, it's always the same problem. I cannot find my keynote. <laughs> my, too many things on the computer. Oh my God, where is it? Ah, maybe it's this one. No, it's not this one. Keynote is still, uh, I see. Maybe I should switch Keynote off, right? Otherwise I cannot see it. And uh, share the screen. Let's see, now I have switch Keynote off. Oh my God. Uh, be patient for another few seconds that I find. I don't know why it's so hard to find a, an application, so many. Beautiful. Oh my. Let's see, I share any screen and then I switch from one to the other. I think it should back to meeting. Let's see. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. You're still here, yep. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, I, can see your, I can see your screen. You see the screen? Yeah. Yeah, consciousness evolution and free will. Okay, okay, great, great. I did so many seminars and lectures, but and I never got this problem like this evening. Okay, let's see. Now, uh, it's still recording, right? Consciousness, uh, I was saying, the evolution of consciousness goes in this way. There is an input which comes from, um, you know, somebody uh, hitting you or uh, you see, a color, you see a cat, which is I, T. So depending on, on the time, there is the choice of which of many possible transformation you, you have. Uh, actually, this, sorry, no, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. This depends on the time, the transformation, and transform the state omega t in the state omega t plus one, with probability going, giving, given by this trace. Now, but here, this index depends, is random, it is random. I want to take into account not only the time, uh, when it occurs, which depends on your internal functioning, whatever, but it depends also on your input, classical input, what you see, what you do. So the, the state at time t plus one is, is the evolution of the state at time t depending on the random occurrence i t at time t of one of possible many transformations depending on the time and depending only also on the input at that time, on the classical input at that time. So there is a tra different transformation, different because of the time is different, because of the uh, input is different and because it's random. And there is nothing more than that. And which one occurs, namely the i, t, is which one occurs probabilistically is the free will. So essentially the sequence is the following. I have an input going to determine the transformation, the pure state at time t entering the transformation which preserve purity. And there is an output which is which transformation occur, which is the free will. 
and then I have an infinite sequence of this kind of scheme. So I have a, if you want, a simple model which can be simulated, for example, by a computer. And it's just a very general sequence of uh, pure transformations over a pure state. And then we need to give an interpretation to the, the, the superposition, to the colors, to this kind of stuff. Clearly, this is something that we cannot know. So the theory is a black box, also in the sense that I don't know the functioning. I just made, as you see, um, assumptions. And, and I derive the consequence of the assumptions in a logical way. But if I want to know if uh, the guy here see yellows or right or red or whatever, I need to have a detailed description, which is not black box anymore. But no, this is. Well, uh, I'm know. trying to understand the formalism. So this is. Um, uh, so so both the uh, both the state vectors and the uh, and the uh, operators are time dependent. So what's that? This is in the in the Dirac picture. I'm trying to understand uh, the formalism here. This is a, the completely positive maps that is random. And both which, your both which, your state which, vectors which, and which preserve which preserve the purity of the density matrix omega t. Omega t is a density matrix depending on time. Okay. Is the state okay. is the ontic state called omega because it's ontic ontic state. And this is the ontic transformations, which occur probabilistically and preserve purity. And the transformations occur probabilistically with outcome i t, depending on time, depends on an input which is x at time t. Okay, and both depends, here. And depends, and depends on time also. And this is so you have an input and, and you have an output. And the input is classical, right? And the input is classical. The input and the output are classical. Yeah. So the input is xt and the output is it. They are both classical. And the transformation is the and the the the, the feeling of the personal identity is this infinite sequence of transformation. So the personal identity is the sequence of transformation and states input actually the sequence of transformations so there is no there is no collapse in in some sense no. so uh, yeah no it's and something that's the important that's the important point there is no collapse there is no collapse i'm saying there are people that call collapse also this one but it, it preserves entanglement so it is usually so literature is very contradictory because it depends on the language and the local language they say that entanglement mm -hmm. cannot be this uh, is entanglement is destroyed by collapse but they because they mean the collapse of von neumann and then if they have a probabilistic uh, the pro probabilistic evolution they call collapse also because they they want to describe every probabilistic evolution in terms of von neumann and unitary which is not needed this is something which is a, an old thing which should forgotten be forgotten I'm saying I can achieve every transformation in terms of a unitary one and a von Neumann one, but the fact that I can do it mathematically does not mean that it's done. Okay. This is a this is actually and so the many word interpretation is absolutely out of mind because I cannot say that the word is in a pure state. I cannot say that the transformation are unitary. Even quantum field theory don't say that the transformation are unitary, and the. Paradox. Well, hold on. I, I, I thought I thought that was a special case of uh, unitary transformation. So you're no, no. using the Dirac language here, no? Uh, I, I'm using. No, no, no. This is this is much more general than that. It's more general than Dirac. Dirac was okay. unitary. Dirac was yeah, unitary all is, the time. This is uh, seventy quantum years field. later. Yes. yes. <laughs> no, this actually the completely positive map. Something which was was discovered in the late sixties. Because David Davis wrote, wrote a book about so-called open systems, and he didn't know that the, you need complete positivity. He used positive transformations. Actually, it was very famous and wrote a very good book, but it was wrong. This is famous. It's a famous mistake. So these things are pretty recent. They say uh, they have 40 years. 
So, Maharaj, is X sub T an observation? X, uh, X sub T uh, is everything coming from outside. So, sensorial, observation, pain, uh, uh, whatever. Everything comes from outside, including your body. Because, the, because you are not your body. You are... Yeah, I think everyone here agrees with that. Yes. In fact, no, no. So we should distinguish the X of T is everything coming from outside, including the body. But there are no qualia in X sub T, right? No, there are no qualia. This is just uh, classical information coming through physics inside. And then they are transformed into qualia because there is a transformation which preserves purity and purity is the qualia. And it transforms qualias into qualias, makes new qualia. And there is a memory effect. There is a memory effect, which is because of this transformation in sequence, they are not Markovian uh, of order, there are infinite Markov. I would say, you say that there is an order of Markovianity, right? So these are infinite in the sense that there is no, no Markovianity at all. Uh, uh, Manu, I have to ask you how much longer you're going to go. I have to look up. Yeah, no, but in fact, I, 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 I am done. If you, if you, no, okay. if, if you want something, let me skip. Well, yeah, we can, I mean, I can certainly go we, a few we, more we, minutes. We can, so. we, can, we can make another, another um, meeting because there is something about uh, the experimental part a little bit, but we can do it another time. Actually, we, we didn't discuss much, so we should discuss more <laughs> in my interest, actually. So maybe we can make another portion. Uh, are, you, are you substantially done with the, uh, the, the model itself? Yes, with the model I'm done. Okay, great, thank you. Well, shall, shall we try for sometime early next week, like Tuesday or Wednesday? Yes, Yeah. for me it's okay. Uh, maybe let's check the calendar. So maybe, what about uh, Tuesday at 9.30? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not free at 9.30 on Tuesday. For me, it's okay. No, wait a minute. I'm free from, yeah, 9.30 to 10. <laughs> what about Wednesday, can... or anybody else? How about Wednesday at 9.30? For me, Wednesday um, is okay. These are the good days. Wednesday is also not good. I'm attending a category theory seminar. We're seeing yeah. all your calendar and stuff, Mauro. Uh, you yeah. said category theory, um, Shetan, where at UCR? Yeah, it's the ACT seminar at UCR. I can send you the, the links if you like. Oh, yeah, How about please. Next Thanks. Thursday? How about next Thursday? Thursday's free. Yes, so next Thursday. Uh, same time. 9.30 9 then. 30. Yes, 9.30? Okay. Yeah. And we can let you continue tomorrow and then we can have a discussion. Yes, I, I love discussion and this is missing. Today we discuss very little. Yeah, Mauro, well, can you send these slides, please? Yes. Oh yes, sure, 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 I will, yeah. I will. Cool. I will send immediately. Yeah. Uh, do you want the keynote of the PDF? The PDF is readable by everybody, right? Yeah, I can't deal with Keynote at all, so please send a PDF. Okay, yeah. okay. Sure, yeah, I, I will do it. Thanks myself. to you. But uh, I, I, I would love to have your feedback. So, next time. Very, very good. Well, this has been great. Thank, thanks a lot, Thank Mauro. It's been very, very helpful. Yeah, excellent. Thanks to you. Okay, okay. Be, be healthy, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You too. Uh, and good evening to you, Mauro. Thanks. Good evening to you. <laughs> good good, 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 good dinner, everyone. Thanks. Bye. 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 Where's the?